You are listening to the Mad Music Marketing Minutes podcast with your host, Billy Gryzak. Brought to you by MusicMarketingMind.com. Personal music career support services. The show starts in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, everybody, welcome once again to another adventure in music marketing. It's the Mad Music Marketing Minute Show with me, your music marketing mind, Billy Gryzak. And uh, boy, have we got a great show today. We're going to talk about something that uh, might is sort of considered a dirty word or taboo or, or naughty in the world of marketing. And we're going to find out the real story today. So uh, I hope I have you all excited and you're ready to listen. But before we do, I just want to drop something on you here that you might not be aware of. Uh, for the last uh, 25 days, I have been uh, tweeting out the rules to how to really sell merch, how to sell merchandise like t-shirts, hats, and things like that on stage, off stage, and elsewhere. You can follow those every day. They're free at uh, Music Market Mind. That's a Twitter. That's my Twitter handle, at Music Market Mind. And uh, they'll be going out every day. So I had to start to show off a little commercial because I know a lot of people have been asking, where are these sales tips that you keep telling us about? You get them on Twitter, at Music Market Mind. Okay, enough of that. On with the show. What's this taboo thing? What's this bad word thing? What, what are we talking about here? Well, today we're talking about direct response. So we're going to talk to one of the more direct people I know uh, who's also... Uh, Freezing uh, from the uh, wonderful uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin uh, winter that's making its way down to the Chicagoland area in Illinois. This is my friend Neil Christensen. Hey, Neil, how you doing today? I'm doing great, Billy. How are you? Oh, cold, freezing. Uh, like I told you earlier uh, before the show, my car won't start, so it's a good it's a good day to podcast. <laughs> I've been out testing mine, making sure they go every day, just to. Even if I'm not going somewhere, you got to start that thing up. I'm but, telling you, you know, and you know, that's that's a lot like marketing too, isn't it? Do you like that segue? Was that a good segue? That was a, that was very smooth. Thank you, very. You got to get out there and you know, kick the tires, start the engine every day, just a little bit. Anyway, uh, before we get too deep into uh, what we're going to talk about, uh, why don't you tell everybody who you are, what what you do, and uh, you know, whatever. So take it away. Go ahead, Neil. All right. Well, thanks. Um, well. Neil Christensen, my wife uh, Janine and I, we run a music marketing company called Only Sky Artist out of, uh, like you said, out of the Chicago area. Um, and we help musicians mostly in the areas of digital online marketing, uh, helping people set up with uh, email campaigns and, and uh, websites and things of, things of that nature. And... Uh, well, I guess a little bit about me. We got uh, we got into music marketing here a few years ago when, uh, well, way back, if we go way back 20 years ago, I was in a band and did, did the band thing and was never that good at it and always wanted to be behind the scenes in music. And then life took, took a hard right somewhere along the way, and I ended up in construction and owned a remodeling company for 15 years. Wow. Yeah. So I had a, I got a lot of great business experience. But then I started getting back into music and meeting a lot of people in the music community and kind of getting behind the scenes in music and realized that so many people in music had no business skills or very little business skills. And they were giving up on, on music on their dream because they weren't making money. They couldn't, uh, they couldn't make it in music because they just didn't have the business skills. They had great music skills. They could write great songs. They could, they could perform and they could do all the on the onstage stuff. But it was when they came off stage that they just couldn't put it all together. So that's when I started kind of helping people out and uh, trying to help them turn music into a business a little bit. I know that's another kind of dirty word to say, but uh, <laughs> if, if, if you want to, if you want to be able to keep doing it, you gotta, you gotta somehow pay the bills. So, so am I going to have to put like explicit on this for all the dirty words <laughs> we're going to be talking about today? Yeah. You're making me feel so bad today. <laughs> no, no, no. The idea here is to, to demystify and to make people understand that marketing is not a naughty word and all the words that go with it. I mean, it's uh, it's what you do. I mean, it's the complete package. Uh, don't you think that's really what a lot of artists are missing is being the complete package, really? Yeah. It, it, you know, when you hear complete package, usually in music, you think like uh, being able to write, being able to sing, being able to play an instrument. But you need to add in the business side of it too. Nowadays, it's not. There's nobody there to help you pick up the pieces and 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 grab it and do all that for you. You have to do everything. 
Exactly. So that's very important that, yeah, to be a complete player nowadays. Right. I mean, the skills of the uh, contemporary musician are not only, you know, being a, a, pr a proficient on your instrument and proficient on your, your vocal ability, your songwriting, but knowing your way around technology, knowing your way around computers, knowing your way around yep. social media, and knowing your way around marketing and... Uh, and around direct response marketing. Ah, direct uh, response segue. marketing. Yeah. So you, you are the king of segues now, my friend. T tell <laughs> us, you. tell us, please, what exactly is direct response marketing? Well, direct response marketing is different from, well, I think when a lot of people think marketing, they think branding. You know, they think, uh, they think the Pepsi commercial or the Coca-Cola commercial or the Super Bowl commercial, you know, where we put out this big facade and tell everybody about all these wonderful things. But direct response says we need to take that a step further and we need to give people something to do. We need to have them perform some action that then we can measure and turn around and see if our marketing is doing any good. I mean, that's kind of the core of direct response is being able to uh, ask people to do an action and then being able to measure that action and see if they followed up with it and see what's working and what's not working. I think marketing, if true marketing has a lot of math involved in it, uh, which I think scares a lot of people, but it's true. Marketing has a lot of math, and if we can measure and, and keep track of what's working best for us and how much money we're spending on this versus how much we're getting in for it, then we can really target our marketing and spend our money the wisest. Whereas if we just put up a Super Bowl ad and, and spread it out there and have people to who knows what when it's over. My favorite one nowadays is the camel walking around that screams, what day is it? <laughs> what, what am I supposed to do with that? When I'm done watching that commercial, what am I supposed to, how do they know that I saw the commercial and then went, hey, I need to buy, I can't even tell you what that's for. What is it for? Do you know? Geico insurance. Okay. It's Geico. Okay. How do they know that I saw a camel wandering around screaming, what day is it? And then went and did anything about it. They, they don't. Mm -hmm. And so they don't know if that money they've spent on that marketing campaign, I mean, yeah, they can look at the big picture and say that, well, since we started running the camel, maybe our, it went up, you know, our sales went up this much, but they're running a lot of different Geico commercials. You know, we got the gecko, we got this guy, we got the guy sitting in a song somewhere, I think. And so they've got a lot of different commercials. How do they know which one is the one that's doing anything for them? Right, and and also when you start getting into that type of advertising, that's more like the shotgun approach where you're exactly. just throwing it all out there because you have so many resources that right. if if you throw out you know you know a thousand hooks and you catch you know ten fish, you're doing good, you know. But right. as indie artists, uh, we don't have those resources, you know. So uh, you're, no, you're... but the indie artists try to emulate the the major label, and what is the major label doing? They're running around spending tons of money on things that, again, they can't measure and don't know if they work. Uh, when somebody, when they put up a, an ad or whatever, they just say, available now on iTunes or available now at your local record store. Or, you know, there's no, what am I supposed to, again, what am I supposed to do with that? They've implied that I'm supposed to buy it, but they really haven't told me how or, or go do it now or I need to do it by a certain time. I mean, there's, there's some basic rules to direct response marketing. And the first one that I, the two of them I'd really like to talk about today because I think they're very important. Yeah, are, let's uh, do it. Let's do it. Yeah. First of all, uh, anything you do marketing-wise should have a clear call to action. Okay, now, is, yeah, and, and explain call to action because, you know, we have everybody, you know, from uh, uh, teenagers all the way up through the super veterans listening to this show and – uh, even the super veterans, uh, like myself, sometimes we just need to get back to the basics, you know? Yeah. So, well, so the action just means that I'm going to tell you what I want you to do next. So you've seen my ad or you saw my, saw my post on Facebook or you got my email, whatever it was. What is the one thing I want you to do when you're done reading that or watching it or listening to my, my audio or whatever it is? What do I want you to do next? That's, that's my call to action. So if it's you know, I want you to go buy my buy my new CD. That could be a call to action. I want you to sign up for my email list. That maybe is my call to action. Uh, maybe maybe you're a booking agent, and I want you to uh, to sign me up to play at your venue. 
you know, that maybe that's my call to action is that I want you to pick up the phone and call me. So it's, it's whatever that one specific thing is that I want you to do when you're done seeing my ad or my video or whatever it is. So what you're saying is you want uh, the per- prospective uh, customer, consumer, listener, fan to do what it is, like go somewhere, for instance, like maybe to their website and take action, correct? Right. Right. Now, one of the mistakes I always see, and, and I don't know if this is something you want to address or not, but a lot of times, we, we, last week we had uh, Ross from Electric Kiwi uh, yes. talking about website design. And, uh, you know, one of the big sins I always see when I go to websites is I don't know what they want me to do when I go there, you know? Definitely. And Definitely. So how, how does that work with this? Websites suffer from... Um, I can, emails, websites, I see a lot of them that suffer from what I call pukeitis, <laughs> which is where I just puke up everything about my band or everything about my music or whatever it is. I get an email and it says, uh, here's the 15 shows we have coming up. Uh, here's where you can buy our CD. Here's where you can buy our last CD. Here's where you can listen to our music. And it just goes on and on. And, and I mean, what do I do? What, what do I do? I take the least... Um, you know, the easiest path, which is nothing, because I haven't really, nobody's really told me what to do, made it easy for me. It, it's so much of marketing is about making it easy for somebody to buy from you. And when you go to a website that has so much going on, I can't dig through all that and figure out what you want me to do. I just shut down and I move on. Whereas if I go to a website that says, hey, enter your email address right here and I'm going to send you a free download okay, I can wrap my brain about, around that. Or, hey, click this button and check out our, our video. Okay, that I can do. But when you give me 20 different things to do, I don't know which one is the most important. I don't know which one I should do. And, and you just you suffer from overwhelm and you shut down. You know, you're, you're, you're uh, kind of leading me into talking about the uh, post that I put up on our uh, Facebook uh, Music Career Support Group that's... Uh, uh, music marketing mind uh in groups on facebook and uh i had posted up uh something to the uh how to sell merch and i mentioned uh uh sales funnels and uh splash page landing page you yeah. know and you practically jumped out of my computer you got so excited and i love that stuff i know and and i gotta tell you i got, I got a bunch of private messages that were like what the heck are you talking about billy and yeah. uh and I'm hoping that, because, you know, I, I suffer from this too. You know, I have a lot of product, a lot of different things on my music website. And on the webpage, you kind of want to have it there. But it does make it difficult to have one call to action. So uh, maybe we could discuss the possibility of landing pages or maybe yeah. some, some of those things. I don't know if you want to get into that too deep or not. But, uh, yeah, we, we can touch on that. I mean, uh, Janine and I call them music. Um, fan attractor pages music fan attractor pages and it has one job and that is to attract a fan Hmm. so when they land on that page um they are going there's only one thing they can do there and that is enter their email address and get a free download or just get on your list or whatever whatever reason you want to entice them with to enter their email address but the only action they can really take is to enter their email address it's a very simple one-page website that doesn't have any links to anywhere. It's not associated with your regular domain name. So if, you're, if your website is uh, billygrizekmusic.com, well, maybe this is mrbilly.com, totally different domain name, so that people don't get distracted and don't go down the rabbit hole of all your videos. They, there's only one thing they can do, and that's enter their email address. And you know, sometimes people argue with me, well, if they don't want to enter their email address, then they're not going to find out anything about me. Well, if if they're not committed enough to enter their email address there after you've given them hopefully some compelling reason to do so, then they're probably not your fan. And right. I, 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 actually, I actually call that weeding. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I would rather have 100 people that really are wrapped to every everything that I put out, everything I say, they're just diehard diehards. Then ten thousand right. people that don't even, you know, don't even open my messages. You know, my, Michael Jackson was one of the most popular performers on the planet, but did he have nine billion fans? 
no, not even he could get every person on the planet to be his fan. So you as an independent artist, you're not going to have, everybody is not your fan. I, you know, I hear that a lot from artists. They tell me, oh, my music is for everybody. No, it's not. No, it's not everybody is going to like your music. So you have to accept that some will, some won't, you know, move on and and find the one that will. So, uh, that, it, but that's, I don't know, we're kind of getting into a an attitude there or a, a, some sort of a, something other than, Splash pages, but right. Yeah, so the basic job of the splash page or the the landing page or the music fan attractor page is to just try to is to try to get an email address from somebody so you can get them on your your email list. And then the other one thing I wanted to talk about today, big direct response rule that I have is follow up. Ah, uh, that email list comes in because let me ask you a question. I ask a lot of people this question: How many uh, artist email lists are you on? A lot. How many emails do you get a week from those artists? Probably 10%. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. On my experience, it's even that. And that's what just um, frustrates me about, well, and I just I can't pick on artists because I think it's all businesses in general. They get Everybody gets obsessed about getting somebody on their email list. And we, we build up this big list. You know, I've got I've got a thousand people on my list. I got five thousand people on my list. But do you use it? It doesn't matter if you've got five or five hundred if you never send out an email. And oh, yeah, don't get me started on that. Yeah, I oh. I have a friend um, who will remain nameless because uh, he listens to this show. No, <laughs> just but no, I do know some uh, someone specifically. We talk about this all the time. You know, he's like, well, I've I've been getting names for years. And but he hasn't said anything out yet, you know yeah. what I mean? And but that's just amazing. No, absolutely nothing because they've long forgotten who he is, why they signed up. I mean, if you send somebody an email now that you haven't talked to in two years, they're going to hit the spam button because they're going to have no idea who you are. So if you don't use the email list, it's it's you're doing a detriment to yourself when you when you finally do get around to using it because people are going to spam you left and right and they're just they're not going to be interested because they don't even remember who you are let alone want to buy anything from you so when the first email i get you know 6 months later is hey we started a kickstarter campaign come give us lots of money i, I don't i don't even remember who you are let alone want to go give you lots of money right 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 so, exactly I, so i think the big part of that of, of direct response like i said is follow up and when somebody signs up for your list, you know, one of the first things you want to do, I think a lot of people think just because they signed up on the list that they're now a fan. Right. But just don't call those people fans. Those are potential fans. You haven't done the work yet to actually make them a fan. And the beauty of all this automation and technology that we have today is that, is that we can send out emails automatically that we don't have to sit there and write and hit the send button. And if, if we have that set up so that people get emails from you once they sign up on your list that says, hey, thanks for signing up, and here's a little sum about me. And then two days later, they get another email that says, hey, here's a little more about me, and hey, here's a video you might want to see, and I'm really excited that you're on my list, and here's something else you might want. Now, is we're talking about autoresponders, correct? You there with me? Did I lose you? Uh-oh. So much more powerful. Uh oh, hold on. We, we just had a big gap there. Um, yeah, my my question was: so you're talking about autoresponders, basically, correct? Yes, autoresponders, exactly. So, uh, just so uh, just again to be clear for everybody, autoresponders is basically setting up a series of uh, replies that are automated that uh, come from that initial email contact, correct? Correct. So th that you can set up in your email service provider, um, you can set up that on the first day they're going to get this email, and then three days after they sign up they're going to get this email, and so on and so on, you know, so that they just get a series of emails that kind of introduce you to your new potential fan. Yeah, I, I remember uh, one artist that used it so well. I think his name, I'm thinking it's Charlie Cheney, possibly. I can't remember his last name right now. I feel really bad, but he was a guest on another podcast, and they were actually talking about autoresponders. 
So mm-hmm. out of curiosity, I signed up. He was a jazz saxophone player. And his emails were masterful. They, they were great. In fact, I, the reason I, I, I brought this up, I just got an email from him again. Like, uh, it's been like a year later. And it was like, I, you know, he still has like an autoresponder that goes out like a year later if you still haven't bought anything. Yeah. And it's like, hey, just wanted to let you know what's been up with me for the last year, blah, blah, blah. N- not trying to sell, not explicitly trying to sell anything. That's that's what's really key, don't you think? Yeah, especially in those initial ones. It's more about telling a story and making a connection because he told you a great story probably somewhere in there. Totally. Totally. several stories and then and then that dug into your brain and you remember who he is now a year later whereas if if they hadn't really given you any connection point or anything uh, more personal about them uh, you wouldn't have that memory of him you'd, you'd right now you'd be saying who is that and you'd be hitting the spam button so it, you know I, I think stories and writing having some compelling connection point with people other than just music um I think artists forget that they're real people sometimes, and they just want to talk about, you know, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, and here's my album, and here's here's my Kickstarter. But they probably have a life outside of music, which uh, other people would connect with. They have hobbies, they have family, they have whatever, and and it's a lot of those stories that uh, help them connect with people, as well as some of the cool um, behind the scenes music industry stories that a lot of fans want to live vicariously through those are cool too but mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's better the more points you have to try to connect with somebody the more chance you're going to connect with more people you know because it, somewhere out there is going to be your group of people that have those same hobbies that like your music that like uh, that can relate to your family problem or whatever it is i, I shouldn't say problem but your family dynamic or how, whatever you would want to talk about but i i that's the beauty of the autoresponder is trying to start that relationship and make that connection. And, and you can do that automatically. You don't have to sit there and write each email uh, to send out every week. So that, that way you can be consistent without spending a lot of time. You set it once, and I don't want to say forget it, but, yeah, you kind of forget it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You set it up and let it run. So, so that's the beauty of the autoresponder. And most of the email service providers have that. So. Right, right, yeah. I I uh, use uh, Mailchimp. Are you familiar with that one? Yes. And uh, and I'm still I still just use the free version, um, and it it works well for what I'm doing right now so far. Do they have autoresponders on the free version? Yes, they do. How how long ago did you get Mailchimp? Um, uh, well, I've had it forever. Yeah, I think your grandfathered in. I don't think they have that anymore on oh. the free version. Oh. Uh, I think the, they they kept it with the people that had signed up with the older accounts, but I oh. think uh, don't completely quote me on this, but I don't think they have that on the free version anymore. Hmm. Yeah, well, uh, but but there are other services. But there are. Are oh, there yeah. are there any services that that you've uh, had success with that you would feel comfortable recommending, or do you have like a proprietary system of your own that that you? Uh... Well, f- funny you should ask that because I'm working on one right now that we will have coming out specifically for musicians, hopefully here in the next month, called music fan attractor Ah. but um aweber is one that i've used in the past and would recommend would feel good about recommending and i know a lot of musicians that use that so that's a good one and mailchimp has it too if you pay for it right um so but uh yeah janine and i are working on our own system as well too it'll be specifically geared for musicians so that's fantastic and i i know some of the other services have uh different varying degrees of autoresponders and things like that. I've uh, been talking with the people from uh, a couple of other hosting companies, and they're trying to implement that. So it sounds like it's a very important thing to do. Yes. Yeah. So so here we go. Uh, let's say you're, you're, you're the typical. Well, you're not the typical. You're the, the atypical. You're the uh, mover and shaker uh, musician because you know you're not... A record deal, a record company isn't the way to go anymore. So you went ahead and you recorded uh, a really good CD. You didn't spend all your money in the studio because we all know that spending all your money in the studio is not wise because you have no money left over for marketing. So you went, you, you wanted the best product possible. You went to a studio, you recorded uh, a good sounding recording and, and, and you've, you've released it now and you have your own website. And you have a little bit of marketing money on the side. Uh, 
you know, you're not rich or anything, but you want to uh, uh, sell some CDs and book some tours, uh, what's your best recommendation? What, what, what should I do next? What should you do? Well, my best recommendation, I think your best marketing is, is a kick-ass live show. Hmm. I think that is your best marketing. Um, that is going to, because you've got an audience there right in front of you that just felt that experience. I mean, when you are, when you're marketing through, you can do Facebook ads and we do Facebook ads. So, I mean, you could, you could spend money on Facebook ads. You could be doing uh, newspaper interviews and PR and all those types of things, but none of those have that real visceral connection. Like when I, when I read a Facebook ad, I don't get all excited. I don't sweat. I don't feel the music. Um, so I think a, a live show is your best marketing and, but, but being able to capture those fans there at the live show and, and finding a way to follow up with them in the future. So not just letting them walk out of there without ever seeing them or hearing from them again. And, and that's the trick with the live show is being able to try to, to get people on your email list while they're at the show. And so, um, wait a minute, know, wait a minute, wait, hold on, hold on. You mean me, the rock star. I've got to get down there and I've got to actually communicate with these people. I mean, come on. You know, I just did a show. I want to go have some drinks. I want to party. You know, you, you mean to tell me i got to go out there and, like, start actually doing my marketing at the live show? You're nuts. Um, Billy, let me tell you a little story about something that happened to me last week in Nashville. Okay. Janine and I went down to Nashville for Christmas. And, of course, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the epicenter of music in the, this area of the country. So we're at clubs and things every night, and I went to a show one night. The opening act, I kind of liked him. He was pretty good. Uh, the main act, I loved him. He was awesome. The place was empty. There was maybe 20 of us there because it's the week of Christmas. Mm -hmm. After the show, the opening act guy is wandering around and talks to me. He and I had a great conversation. Told me about all the, he, he's a blues guitarist, he used to play with Buddy Guy, and you know, I'm a blues freak from Chicago, so mm -hmm. I, I probably saw him 20 years ago open, playing with Buddy Guy and with Coco Taylor and all those. So now I'm like, I talked to him, I had a conversation, we had a connection because he, he's telling me about all these clubs he used to play at. The other guy whose music I actually like better disappeared, never saw him. I don't even remember his name now. <laughs> so uh, I, I think have, being a real person. Trump's having great music sometimes. Your music can be awesome, but if it, nobody can find a way to connect with you, it 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 just doesn't matter. But it, people connect with people. They don't always connect with the music. So uh, getting down and getting dirty and shaking a hand and giving out a uh, free download card or selling some CDs um, is your best marketing because people will remember you that way. You are forever in their brain again you've dug into their brain because you had a real conversation wow you know i'll share i'll share a similar story with you uh there's a a record store here in town records i mean vinyl records it's so cool and they have a little stage in the back and what they do is they have uh bands that are coming through uh uh on tour or you know indie bands local bands whatever they'll come in and they have there's a stage from the play on you know what i mean it's really cool and um, one night I was in there, and there was a couple of guys from, um, what was it, uh, Colorado that were just touring, two acoustic guitar players. It's like four people in the place. I was one of the four. And they looked kind of depressed up there. <laughs> and they never actually even mentioned they had CDs for sale. They didn't mention their Facebook, nothing. And, like, when I tried to talk to the guy, he was just kind of, like, couldn't wait to get out of there, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought they were great. But, you know, he was kind of depressing me by, by the time I talked to him, you know. And uh, then uh, a couple of weeks after that, I went and saw this band that uh, it's kind of local. And they just got their first national tour and they went to do some warm-up dates. And they're in there playing to about, you know, six or seven people, maybe ten. And I swear, they could have been at Ma Madison Square Garden, man. I was so impressed. You know, I, I hung around, I talked to them, I bought their CD, I did some... Uh, promotion for them online pro bono just because I like them so much, you know? Uh, not necessarily that it was my type of band or my type of music, but they just floored me with putting on this, like, high-level concert experience in this little tiny record store for 10 people, you know what I mean? And uh, that, I, I think that bands sometimes, you know, let the surroundings get to them, and uh, 
there could that one person could be out there. Maybe if you do want a record deal, you know, people still do get them, and who knows that record person, that record the A and R director might be one of those four people when you're sitting there depressed in Green Bay. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or a music marketing guy that will do pro bono work for you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> who knows? Exactly. You know. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, we're getting, we're getting close to. Oh wow, man! We we've been talking for a while. This is awesome. Oops. Uh, we're, we're gonna have to do this again if you don't mind. This is way. I cool. don't mind at all. Um, in fact, I'm gonna come down your way. Uh, you have you have a group in uh, Chicago, correct? Yeah, we do a networking group in the western suburbs of Chicago here. Yeah, wh- once wh- a month. Why don't you tell me? Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Tell us a little bit about that because uh, we do have people down in the area. So uh, uh, yeah, t- t- tell us about that. Yeah, it's called. Uh, it's called Plug, uh, Chicago's Music Business Network. Please let me spit that out. Plug, Chicago Music Business Network. Wow. That's a tongue twister today for some reason. Probably because my tongue is frozen. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we do once a month meetings down here where we get guys together and girls uh, get together. And uh, we usually have a topic or a speaker that we, that we uh, learn something educational about music business, music marketing. Last month we talked about uh, licensing uh, we've talked about house concerts. We've talked about how to monetize. Um, and then we, uh, we have time to just chit chat, network, have some snacks. Um, so it's a great little way to, uh, get together and, and meet some people here in the local area because, uh, you know, like we just talked about, you know, we connect with people. So get out of the living room, uh, get off of Facebook and come out and meet somebody in person. So if somebody wants to uh, be involved in that, how would they, how would they do that? Uh, they could check out the website for that, which is theplugnetwork.com. It's theplugnetwork.com, and they could find us there. And our next meeting is January 21st, I believe. Excellent. And um, for those artists out there that are interested in finding out more about the things we discussed that we didn't go into a great deal of detail, like we talked about the landing page a little bit, splash page, autoresponders, and also what services you offer, because, you know, a lot of people, myself included, you know, we, you, you always need a little help. You know what I mean? You, you, yep. you think you can do it all yourself, and that's great, but sometimes you need to take the time to do the things you're really good at, the things you really love to do, and, mm-hmm. and, 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 and get a little help with those other things. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Uh, like yeah, for, I don't do everything myself. Yeah, like, for instance, There's you know. certain things that I don't want to do, so. Yeah. yeah. And, like, for instance, you know, one of the things I do is, like, I call people. Like, people pay me to call them and keep them motivated. You know what I mean? And it's just like, it's, you know, an accountability call, a wake-up call. It's like, have you done that? You know, blah, blah, blah. And so, and and that's that's an important service. And your service is vital, you know, to to, to surviving in the new millennium. So uh, if somebody wants to just chat with you about some of these things, would that be cool? Yeah, could we do? Could uh, I actually do a little direct response show and tell right now? Please do. How, how about this? This is how this is how direct response and a clear call to action work. So what I'm going to do is I, you know, I said that I have six rules of direct response, but we did, we only got to two today, which were clear call to action and follow up. So if you if you'd like to get all six of them, I set up a special page just for your listeners today that they could go to, <laughs> which is onlyskyartist.com forward slash Billy. Wow. And they could go there and, um, of course, it, put in your email address and I will email you all six of the direct response rules for uh, music marketing. How about that? You, direct you, response in action. You know, earlier this week, somebody in our group called me a genius, but I need to pass the baton on to you and, and you, can, you can wear the uh, genius crown today. Well, you got to you got to practice what you preach, right? And you if, do. If I got on here and told everybody how awesome direct response was, and I didn't have a clear call to action at the end of this podcast, uh, that wouldn't look very good, I guess. So, wow, uh, I'm I'm impressed. And everybody, uh, listeners, please uh, check out what Neil's doing. And if you are in the Chicago area, uh, check out the. Um, uh, networking group, and I think I'm going to be the speaker in February or March. I don't remember exactly. I think when. we're looking at March. March. We're okay. going to let the roads thaw a little bit, so you uh, don't kill yourself getting down here. Because um, uh, because right now it's pretty bad to get down here. So yeah, I'm not. Yeah, go, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> we'll have to. We'll have to pick something up. And then can I, I? I need to put in a plug for you in the Music Marketing Minds group on Facebook. Okay. Because if they're not in that group, they need to be. That is the best Facebook group there is ever. 
So you need to come over there and join us. And uh, we talk about this stuff every day, all day, sometimes too much. Uh, that's ne- it's never enough. <laughs> well, if, Some if you- of us don't get any work done because of it. <laughs> Well, listen, if you're into music marketing, uh, yes, please join us on Facebook. It's Music Marketing Mind. It's a Facebook group. Uh, so just uh, do a search. You'll find us. And uh, I'll try to put some links also on the show notes. Anyway, uh, Neil, uh, this has been wonderful. Uh, we've gone uh, a little bit over, about five minutes over, but I, I could go for another hour. Uh, but everybody go over there. Check out the um, uh the direct the the, the the fan attractor page that you set up uh, yep. for for us uh, and get the other four important rules uh, and what was that address one more time? It is onlyskyartist.com forward slash Billy. Great, and of course onlyskyartist.com is where they can uh, find you. Do you have an email address? It's just Neil N E I L at onlyskyartist.com. Boy, you're Mr. Branding. Good for you. Yeah, excellent consistency. Consistency is key. All right, well, yep. this is uh, Billy Grizak, your music marketing mind. I have had a wonderful time, and uh, it's time to say goodbye. Say goodbye, Neil. Goodbye. Thanks, Billy. Bye-bye.